there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anis Ulex and I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now in this video I thought I'm going to provide you with an overview of GitHub Actions. Why do you actually want to use GitHub Actions? One of my first jobs in the cloud native space specifically was for a platform called CodeFresh working with their CICD pipelines which is very exciting and got me on ramped into the space. Now before that, I was developing demo projects, example projects for different companies, but not in the cloud native space. It was very much demo oriented, so I wasn't really thinking much about automating and deploying those projects in the same way that I might be thinking about now being in the cloud native space where a lot of what we do is related to how we optimize and manage our deployments. So, why do you want to get started with GitHub Actions? Well, GitHub Actions is one of the uh, accessible, more accessible CICD pipelines. It's free to use, so you can use it as part of any of your GitHub repositories. Also, there's a vast number of information of resources available. And you want to get started with some form of CACD tooling because it can advance your skills. And in most engineering DevOps related roles, you will be tasked to create pipelines, automating pipelines for your different projects to uh, basically get rid of redundant manual tasks. So the skills that you learn from using GitHub Actions will be widely applicable to other projects, other tooling as well, even if a company is using uh, Codefresh or CircleCI instead of GitHub Actions, the skills that you will learn from using GitHub Actions are applicable to those pipelines, to those platforms as well. Now in this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of GitHub Actions. You can find a blog post with similar content linked below in the description as well as other links that I'm going to share in this video. Let's get started. So the documentation from GitHub really has an amazing overview and also details on GitHub Actions and the terminology used. So I highly suggest you whenever you get started with a new tool, whenever you want to learn about a new tool to actually read the documentation. I mean, I was using GitHub Actions before, but today was probably one of the first times I actually read the documentation itself. So what is basically a GitHub Action? So GitHub Action consists of a workflow. You have a workflow and the workflow is supposed to do several tasks. So a workflow is specified in a .github workflows uh, directory within your repository. And here you can define different workflows such as the way that I've done it here. And these workflows are defined in YAML. So if you're familiar with YAML, it's a similar syntax. It's basically just be careful with the different um, fields and spaces that you're using and it should all work fine. Anyway, so this is a workflow. This one of those things is a workflow. And a workflow runs as a one contained unit. And a workflow has a trigger. So an event, an event, a trigger, something happens. For example, in this case, I'm going to be pushing to the main branch. If I do that, I can also say on merge to the main branch. Now, if I push to the main branch, I want this workflow to run. Now, I'm the only one pushing to this repository, so I'm always going to push probably to the main branch. That's what I'm going to do. So that's when I want this workflow to run. And that's what I specify here. So this is ultimately the event. Now, there are more complex events that you can set up. So if you're curious about that, check the documentation. This is ultimately the event, the trigger for that workflow. Then the workflow is gonna run. So for example, you can have also multiple workflows or multiple jobs within a workflow. So within here, I want to specify that I want to do X, Y, Z um, within that workflow as I, as I when it runs. And that's basically the jobs or the different steps that should be within the workflow. Now they specify you within the same runner. A runner is basically executing the workflow. So each step is either a shell script that will be executed or an action that will be run. Steps are executed in order, uh, in order and are dependent on each other. Since each step is executed on the same runner, you can share data from one step to another. So basically, if you have multiple steps, that are dependent on each other or that share data, that share information. For example, you need from step two, uh, you need the information in step four, you can put that into the same job, into the same uh, runner within your workflow. Now the workflow can have multiple jobs, multiple steps, multiple uh, runners, that's independent of, of, of it. Uh, and then actions are basically specific custom steps 
that you implement in your in your workflow in your job and that can have multiple different things that it's gonna do uh, so we have actually a github marketplace with lots of different actions now you can run so many different actions here people are creating so many different actions so it really depends on what you want to do um, look up the action look up if there's something sometimes it's not necessarily on the marketplace but you should find all of them on the marketplace um, but a lot of times what I'm actually doing is I, if I want to have an action to a specific application that I'm using, I just Google the application name and then say GitHub action. And I find examples for that, uh, for what I want to do. For example, I wanted to set up a kind Kubernetes cluster and then install um, my application inside. So I looked up kind Kubernetes GitHub action and I found an action to actually set that up. Set up a test example cluster and then see if my Helm chart actually installs in that example cluster. So that's something you can do. Now, this is an action. This is how you can find actions. We also have for Trivi, we have an official GitHub action that allows you to do different types of security scanning from within your cluster. So in this example here in my all-in-one workflow, I'm actually, first of all, I'm checking my code base, like my actual Node.js application, if there are any security issues, right? And then once that is done, I'm gonna build the container image and I'm gonna push it to my container registry. So I'm logging into my Docker Hub account, that's my container registry. I'm building the container image and then I push it to my container registry. And once the container image is built, I also use Trivi to scan that container image for critical and high security issues. You can find all of the details for security scanning here in that repository if you're curious. Now, once I have implemented everything, I have this workflow. Usually it doesn't look like that. Well, when you're testing your workflow, it might look like that. You have lots of flat workflows and you have to debug it, but eventually it will all get come green and you can actually check out your workflow. So you can also see as here, different outputs, different, um, so for example, for the file system scan, it tells me that I'm using something that's not supposed to be used. It doesn't throw errors, but it basically helps me to optimize my workflow, my um, different jobs as well. So here are the different jobs within my workflow and I'm scanning my file system, then I'm scanning my container image, and then I'm scanning my deployment resources. So here I'm scanning my deployment resources for security issues. And then I'm actually also able to upload the scan to the security tab on GitHub. So that's something else you can do. You can have like these all-in-one uh, workflows within GitHub utilizing different features of GitHub. So over here, we have the security tab and here is the result for my code scanning from scanning my configuration files for misconfiguration issues with Trivi. So here's the result um, from that scan. Now, when you get want to get started with GitHub Actions, I would highly suggest you to take one of your example repositories. If you don't have an example repository, find one online. Find an re example repository online and then go ahead and build a workflow for it or different types of workflows and um, start to debug. Uh, you can also play around with different actions from the GitHub marketplace and read the documentation. It provides lots of information, not only on the terminology, but also on like, for example, what are the different components that go into an action. So for example, here we have the event and then this is how you visualize it. Basically, you have a runner. The runner is, for example, a specific operating system. Then you have the different jobs. So in my case, these are the different jobs within here that I want to run within that, um, within, within the runner, within that, uh, well, the different steps within the job that I want to run. That's, that's how you probably say it. Um, anyway, what else? Yeah, so you can find lots of information on that. You can find also lots of example workflows um, on using different runners, on installing different CLI tools within your GitHub Actions and much, much more.